Hi everyone, I am Tim Smith, at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. We're going to talk about Veeam architecture in these next couple of videos. So today what we're going to do is talk about the three methods of backing up virtual machines with Veeam Backman Replication, which is hot add mode, network mode, NBD, or direct storage mode, which can be done through direct SAN or even direct NAS. Let's get started with our environment here. Now you can see we've got our VMware server here with our virtual machines up top. We've got our network switch, our Veeam backup and replication server, a physical proxy server right here that we're going to use, a Windows 2016 server, and our repository. We've got a couple different repository types. We'll talk about that in a later video. And we've got our VMware storage down here with our VMFS data source, which will be attached to our VMware host. So, you're probably familiar with how Veeam backs up virtual machines already. We take a snapshot of the virtual machine, we access the uh, snapshot of disks, and transport that on across. But here's the three ways that we can do it. The first one is hot add mode. Now, hot add mode requires us to deploy a proxy onto a virtual machine. Usually what you're going to do is deploy a couple Windows 2012 or 2016 virtual machines and use these as dedicated proxies. We'll use this one here. So we've managed, we've added this virtual machine into our management here in Veeam. We've deployed the proxy service and it is now available to us. Let's go ahead and take a backup of our virtual machines. The first thing we're going to do is Veeam's going to take a snapshot. So now this, now this virtual machine is running off the snapshot files. We've got these original VMDKs that we can now work with. So what we're going to do is actually edit the configuration of this virtual machine automatically and mount that virtual hard drive onto this proxy server. At that point, this proxy server is going to use its CPU power, grab all the bits it needs, compress it on down, and it's going to send it out the virtual switch to the physical network and straight on to your repository. Now we can't use a physical proxy in this case because it does not have access to the VMFS data stores. Only our virtual machines are going to have that kind of access. Let's talk about the second mode, network mode. Now network mode is a mode that we'll fail back to. Um, if hot add happens to fail, we can fail back to this network mode. If direct storage happens to fail, we can also fail back to network mode. With network mode, we can use a virtual or a physical proxy. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is we're going to be using the management interface on our VMware hosts. So in this case, we'll have our physical proxy. We're still going to do our snapshots. We're not doing hot add. So we're not going to be mounting them there. We're going to take our snapshots, and then what's going to happen is we have access through VMware APIs to get to these original files. So the management interface in VMware is going to grab that, and we're going to send it along to our switch, out to our proxy. Our proxy then is going to do the deduplication and compression there, and then send it on down to the repository. Now, you have to remember that our management interface, its bandwidth is limited because VMware is dedicating that to important management tasks. So if you're using one gig, this is going to be painfully slow. 10 gig, it's going to be usable. And of course, we've got 40 and 100 gig out there. But depending on what you're doing, this might not be the preferred method. Last up is direct storage mode. Now, direct storage can be direct NAS if you've got blocks or um, if you've got file services like uh, maybe a NetApp filer uh, or uh, EMC Unified Array, and you're using NFS for your storage, or it could be direct SAN if you're using iSCSI or Fiber Channel for some sort of block storage. Either way, you're going to have some sort of storage network that is in between your hosts and your SAN. In this case, we'll do Fiber Channel. Now, in order for direct storage to work, our proxy server is going to have to have connectivity into that storage network. So this proxy we've installed, a fiber channel adapter, and we've connected it to our fiber channel switch. 
So we're going to do our snapshot up here like normal, but we're not going to have any traffic on the network because our proxy has access over here to the fiber channel side of things. Veeam is smart enough to realize, hey, those BMDKs are sitting down here on storage. Why don't I just grab them directly from there? So we grab that VMDK from the storage, take it through the fiber channel network to the proxy. That proxy is going to uh, deduplicate and compress it, and then send it down to the repository. No network traffic, no load on the management server. With the other two modes, we're reading data between VMware and the storage, right? Because in hot add mode, we've hot added the VMDK file, so we have to read it up through the stack. With network mode, we're reading the disks up to the VMware stack and out. In this mode, we don't have any of that. Instead, we're grabbing it all here, which means there's no additional load on your VMware environment. Now, the downside to this is you're probably going to have to have some sort of physical machine, right? Because you need physical connectivity to that storage network. Uh, if you're doing NFS, it's possible that you can still use a uh, virtual machine as a proxy and there's ways to do it as well with fiber channel. However, you will be putting load on the network because what's going to happen is you're still going to be using at least the virtual switches here. So I don't recommend using direct SAN mode with any sort of virtual appliance. Hot add mode with virtual appliances is highly recommended. If you have physical proxies and you have the ability to do so, direct storage mode is highly preferred. So that's a brief overview of the three different types of transport modes available in Beam Backup and Replication. Join us next time. We're going to talk about the different types of repositories available and which one's going to work best for you.